Welcome back to my channel. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline and I have quite the haul today, quite a bit of craziness that I wanted to share with you guys as usual. I know you like seeing what I pick up, not quite sure why. <laughs> Maybe some of you are living vicariously through me and just seeing what craziness I'm picking up and what I'm selling. So today I'm going to get right into it. Thank you so much for joining me. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to my channel. I'm a full-time reseller and I earn my living this way. Soon to be 60. I always say I have about a month left till I turn 60. Very excited to be selling on eBay full-time for my living. And yeah, I think that's all I have to say say today. I do hope the camera is well lit but not too well lit. I'm working on it. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos on aperture setting and ISO and frame rate and I don't know that I've learned a thing but hopefully my video today won't be too washed out but I'm gonna pull the clothing rack right over here so we can just go through a few pieces of clothing. found some really beautiful stuff this time that I'm very excited for and that I want to share with you guys. All right, let's get started. So how is that? Is that good for the shot? Okay, maybe I have to put it a little bit back. I'm gonna jump right into it because I have to um, actually go out shopping in a little while. This first dress is Silence and Noise. We all know that Silence and Noise is anthropology, and I've never seen such a fancy dress from Silence and Noise. Usually the items that I find in this label are um, tops and um, tunic tops, I'm gonna say, and blouses. But this is a gorgeous beaded dress. This is all open in the back, if you can see that. Look at that, your whole back would be exposed. Just beautiful. I'm gonna say a half sleeve, not really a three-quarter sleeve, and I don't know what else to say about it. Just stunning, size small. In this store, I pay six, I'm gonna say 625 for dresses, and I have not looked up what a fancier item in silence and noise will bring, but I imagine this is gonna go for around the $60 mark, just a guess. So that is item number one. Item number two is an item that when it came out, it was coming out on one of the racks. I saw it right away because of the movement. And I'm not quite sure, truthfully, if this is a negligee or an evening gown. It's a little skimpy to be an evening gown. So let's take a look at the tag. It's actually new with tags. And who's making this? It's silk, which I guess six petite. That looks like a Macy's tag to me. Is that a Macy's tag? So that is the tag on it. I'm standing a little bit further from the camera today because sometimes I think I stand too close to show you the tags and then it makes it worse. Uh, BCBG, Max Azaria. Is that how we say that? Max Azaria, yes. So really pretty spaghetti straps and a silk chiffon skirt with a lining v-neck empire waist really really pretty and again i paid 6.25 for this i guess it's an evening gown it's just the silk is so fine that it reminds me of like a mid-century modern like 1950s or 60s negligee but i guess you wouldn't wear beading to bed <laughs> although you probably wouldn't even wear this to bed it's like before bed okay i'll stop <laughs> The next gown I'm gonna show you is one of my all-time favorites. The movement of this gown is gorgeous. I love when a gown is not only very well made and it's stunning to look at, but when the woman walks in it, it has like a swoosh to it. It's like a romantic, and I will use that keyword in this uh, title for this listing. This is Gunny Sacks, Jessica McClintock. I think this one might be vintage. I'm not sure about that. I'm gonna have to Google it. And it is a size 01, tiny, tiny. I'm actually gonna move the rack out of the way so you guys can see this and, and watch where my chandelier is. Look at this dress. So as you can see, it's a white gown, like a ball gown and with gold, floral embroidery, strapless, 
and kind of like a ballet dancer's gown. And I have actually used dancer's gown uh, or dancer's dress in my listings before. I don't know that anybody is really typing it in. I feel like when a dress is really that style where a dancer would wear it, you know ballerinas when they come out and they're on, on toe and they have those big, big, like in Swan Lake, that's what this reminds me of. I won't use Swan Lake, but that's what this dress is just so stunningly pretty. There I go, I hit the chandelier, I knew I would. And that gunny sack dress, I paid $6.25. That's what's great about the thrift stores that put a certain type of item all at one price. Sometimes this store will price up for certain items. Like the other day I was thrifting and I found a Michael Kors bag and a Dooney and Burke bag. And they made both bags $50 each, which was crazy because the Michael Kors bag is the same bag I carry. And I think I got mine for 80 brand new in I'm gonna say TJ Maxx. My kids had given me a gift card and I bought my bag. I love my bag. It's like the coral one. I carry it everywhere. I'm not really a girl that changes bags frequently. I don't got time for changing bags, but the one that I found was a pink. So it's kind of like on the fence. Would I keep it? Would I sell it? But you know me, I'm very cautious about picking up handbags because there are so many fakes. So if I bought the bag, it would have been for my personal collection, which I really only have maybe seven or eight bags, um, you know, for my personal use. And I really wasn't in love with the pink. And at $50, I definitely wasn't in love with the pink. So getting back to the topic that I started, I like the thrift stores that put the majority of their items at one price point and then just price up once in a while. That works for me. Recently, this Goodwill, this is the Route 30 Goodwill, raised their prices and whoever's doing the prices are a little crazy. I'm just gonna say it. I saw a pair of prescription eyeglasses and you guys know I picked those up if the frames are good because sometimes buyers will purchase those and of course have the lenses popped out and get their own prescription put in. And they were on the shelf and I took a look at them. I forgot what the name was. It wasn't a Hyatt name. And the glasses were broken and they wanted $5 for them. So a lot of times the pricing is not controlled well enough. I did talk to, I think it was the manager of the store saying, hey, you know, $5 for broken glasses is crazy. I also find um, other things from time to time that show that the employees are not checking what's coming out onto the floor. So just a heads up, really check your items and try to buy the items that you're purchasing when they have the across the board pricing. That's what I do. So that gown was six, I'm gonna say 625, perfect that it wasn't priced up. Now that gown won't move very quickly because it's a size zero one. I'm gonna sit on that gown for a long time most likely, but I will use uh, romantic, Gunny Sex has a following too, but I will use romantic, wedding, prom, um, you know, a dancer's gown all in the title and hopefully that will bring the watchers or the lookers. Okay. Next up, I was in a romantic mood after seeing that gown. I picked up this beautiful, it's like a, a mesh lace, kind of like a netting, very soft, sweet. I don't know what color to call this. It's almost like a dusty mauve. This is Lauren Conrad, which I don't pick up a lot of her items, but I see this with ripped jeans or, um, or a jean jacket, you know, kind of like that yin and yang. I love that look when, when a woman wears a really romantic blouse, but then she wears like leather pants. I love when there's a real juxtaposition in, in a person dressing. So this is a size large. And if it was a little bit of a different color, I might wear this, but this is a little pale for me. Yeah, really pretty. I paid $4.75. I'm not sure what Lauren Conrad is bringing. I think she sold just in department stores, but I bought it because I feel like uh, somebody's gonna want this. And the minute I had it in my cart, another woman said, boy, that's pretty. And that's just the type of blouse it is. Okay, we have a theme going on. <laughs> Look at this gorgeous blouse. This is all embroidered and it's like a see-through mesh. And who is making this? This is Bobby Brooks, 3X. I think Bobby Brooks is QVC. I might have that wrong, but I thought this was really pretty. I paid $4.75 for it and I'm guessing probably around the $30 mark.
Next up, truthfully, I bought this for me and it's on the rack. So I'll show you what I bought for myself. This is Old Navy, which a lot of times I don't pay attention to brand. And it's just a very simple, I'm going to call this a prairie blouse. I love a good prairie blouse. Really pretty, new with tag. And this is kind of like either a muslin or a linen. I'm going to say a linen. Really nice. I like when these type of blouses have pockets too. Very prairie country farmhouse look. And if I decide to sell it instead of keep it, those are the keywords that I'll use for it. Uh, again, I paid $4.25 and Old Navy. Sometimes you can get a little bit more if it's a really good style, but I'll probably get, I'm gonna guess about $15 for it. Okay, one more lace top. This one is, let's see who this is. This is Cabby, and it's their newer tag, so that's what that looks like. Size small. It has the exposed zipper in the back. And I love this when they put the little tab on the back so you can zip up your own shirt without needing help. Just a crochet looking open cut work lace. I don't know if it's even cut work, but really pretty. And $4.25 again. Cabby, it doesn't really bring what it used to bring. You know, sometimes when a name brings good money and then everybody starts looking for it, it does bring less money. But that's just the nature of selling online. Some people think it's because of people like me, YouTubers, who tell everybody, hey, look for this brand. I think people are smart enough to sort tops from highest to lowest and figure it out without YouTubers. I don't think it's us. And also all of the big brands are also on eBay. So a lot of times um, brands are not only selling in their store and on their site, but they're also selling on eBay and also Goodwill sells on eBay. So anytime you want to find what brands are bringing the highest price, all you have to put in is women's top and then you just sort from highest to lowest and you go into solds and boom, there are the brands that are bringing the most money. All right, we're just gonna go through a few more pieces of clothing and then I'll jump to hard goods so everybody gets a little bit of what they like today. I know sometimes you guys say, hey, I really like when you do hard goods, could you do more vintage hard goods? And then other people say, oh, please do clothing. You used to do clothing all the time. So today I figured I'd do a little bit of both to give everybody, you know, just a little entertainment. Okay, this top is Torrid. I think Torrid has beautiful styles. So it's just like a chiffon, whoops. And get it back on the hanger. A chiffon top with a little, um, their feathers, feather print, and okay, this hanger is not liking me. I'm just going to take it off uh, in a size two. And I think Torrid has vanity sizing, so I think Torrid's two is a 2X, I would imagine. So that's what that looks like. Again, I paid $4.25. I do quite well with Torrid as long as it is probably two and up, I'm going to say. Okay, I've been selling a lot of swimsuits, mostly the ones new with tag, but I do sell pre-owned swimsuits. Recently, I showed you a Robert Graham swimsuit and pretty much Ralph Lauren, Nike, I'm trying to think, probably those three are my top sellers. This one is a Nike, and you can see it's just a blue and yellow, kind of a geometric print. New with tag, it was $58, and what size is this? I don't know why you guys need to know what size. It's not like I sell here on YouTube. I'm not even seeing what size this is. It is an extra large, so great sizing. I said yes to that. That store I paid $4 for men's swimsuits, so anytime I can get a new men's swimsuit for $4, that's a good deal. Unless it's something that's really, really low quality, I will almost always pick up men's swimsuits if they're new with tags. Okay, this is just a woman's pair of American Eagle shorts. And what size? This is super stretch. And what size are these? These are new with tag. And they are a US 4. So when you see lines like this printed on the shorts, it's not really printed, it's the way that the dye was applied. This must have been scrunched up. That's called whiskering or whiskered. 
So that's a keyword that you can use anytime jeans or pants have this type of uh, treatment, I'm going to call it on it. I'm not sure what this store gets for women's shorts. I'm going to say probably $4. Next up, I found a pair of North Face. These are women's cropped. I call these hiking pants. They're like an outdoorsy, lightweight. Usually this material dries quickly. So I'll use hiking pants in the title. And North Face new, see what they're calling it. <laughs> I could use their keywords. Relaxed fit. They don't, they don't give this a style name, not that I see. Um, stow pockets. I'm not sure what a stow pocket is. Okay, so I don't see that they're giving this a style name, but I picked these up. Now in that store, I think cropped pants count as a pant, and pants are, I believe, $5. But when it's North Face new with tags, that's not a bad buy-in price. I picked up Nike Golf Women's Shorts. I wish these were my size. I really like these. And again, new with tags. Just a little polka dot print with the swoosh on the leg. And again, the type of material that is like a dry quick. Tour Performance, they're calling these. Kind of like in a gray color. This next top, I still haven't looked up. And when I saw the name, I don't know that I've ever sold this name, but somewhere in the back of my brain, I think to myself, this is a good brand. Now, I wasn't sure, and I didn't want to take time to look it up, but a top is $4.25, so it's no big deal to me if it winds up being a bread and butter brand, but this is Wilfred, and the tags looked nice, and the original, whoop, that was thunder. <laughs> We're having a very rainy day here today. Um, the original price was $45 for a simple t-shirt, Kind of like a, like a knit tee, and it has the split back. Really pretty, new with tags, size medium. I might keep this one. I have a lot of gray t-shirts though. So that's why I said yes to it. Now I'm not sure if Wilfred is a good name, you know, when I remembered it, or it's just that my mind associated it with something else. But once in a while, I will pick up clothing without checking comps. But most times with clothing, I check comps to see where the price is averaging. Because with hard goods, say I buy like a, a vintage hard good um, vase, you do want to check if you're just starting out what the competition is bringing, but especially with clothing because the market has so much clothing. In other words, Right now, this top is probably on eBay, Posh, whatever, and there's probably a lot of them, so the competition is higher. Whereas if you have a vintage vase, you still have competition, but it's not as great, if all of that makes sense. This next top, beautiful red. I think my color is still off today. My lighting is still off. This is Pleone, and there is the tag. Really pretty, romantic blouse kind of like a, a crepe material. Again, I paid $4.25. And what will I get for this? I'm not sure what Pleone is bringing. I'm going to guess probably $22 to $26. All right, the other few pieces on the rack are just normal bread and butter pieces, a jean jacket, and an Eileen Fisher top. But now let's get to hard goods. I have a lot of stuff to get through. This won't be a super haul video. I'll pick and choose the items that I think might have interest to you, and we'll go from there. So the first group of items, if you watched my Shop With Me video, you probably saw me find these items. Did I film that part? This might have already been in my cart. This is a group of three, I'm gonna call these soup bowls, two handleless cups, um, I have four saucers and three handled cups. I think that's the whole set that I got. This is Atner's, A-T-N-E-R-S, and I believe Atner's was a company, uh, definitely vintage. These are the late 70s, so you can see them there, and I picked them up for the mushroom design. There's a whole following that, of people that love mushroom design. So I went ahead and picked up the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 pieces and got them for $6. So it wound up being 50 cents a piece. All right, what 
what shall we talk about next? Next, I'm going to talk about this find. This one I did catch on camera. This is Aturia statues made in Italy. I'll take one out of the bag for you. I found four of them, two in each box. And I talked about in my video how the box looked vintage. Whenever I'm scanning the shelves in a thrift store, I look for vintage boxes, boxes where the tape shows age and the box itself shows age. Very hard to fake that. So these are little angels made in Italy. It's almost like Fontanini, but this is Pellegrini, Pellegrini I think. Um, P-E-L-L-E-G-R. I and I think that's how to spell that. And they have little hanging hooks. So I imagine these could go on a Christmas tree or wherever you want, you know, to put them. I think they're a bisque porcelain, I'm gonna guess. I think these are made in Tuscany, um, in Italy. They're in a Tuscan village and they were $3 for the two. I'm not quite sure what they'll bring. Probably $25 um, each. No, I'm going to say I, it would probably bring about $22 each, or if I put two together, I'm thinking about the $40 mark. So not a bad rate of return. Since I mentioned Fontanini, I actually found Fontanini. This is a small box, and I see this name. I know it right away. Fontanini is a company, uh, I believe 1800s they started. Don't quote me on that. And they do things all related to the Christ. So there's the nativity, a lot of statues of faith, and I will just show you a couple. These are the lambs, most likely to a nativity set. So there's a little sitting lamb and a standing lamb. And as you can tell in comparison to my hands, these things are only like an inch and a half, two inches big. And four of them, five of them come in the box. Let me just put them back in the box. Go back in, little lamb. <laughs> and building family traditions the story of brown sheep so not black sheep the brown sheep but it comes with the little brochure definitely vintage and what did i pay for this i believe i paid 97 cents 99 cents either 99 cents or a dollar 99 and what will the sheep bring i'm thinking probably off the top of my head about 20 dollars the next item that I found was this hat, and I actually found this in the hard goods, sitting on a shelf. This is an excellent hat. So I believe it's 100% wool, and it is a buffalo plaid, and this is put out by Bronner's, B-R-O-N-E-R-S. Some of their hats just bring an average price, so it's not like a real high-end company as far as my knowledge goes, but because it is a true buffalo plaid in a wool, let me show you the inside so you can see the tag. I said absolutely yes to this hat, and I'm thinking this is probably going to bring $35 to $40, and hats would pay $1.99 in this store, so great find. The next thing I'm going to lift is super, super heavy. So I'm only going to hold it for a little while. It's like drudgery, but I'm going to show you. Hang on one second. Okay. I think you guys saw me find this great find. This is, I'm just seeing what this says. Candace Olson. Candace Olson is a interior decorator, right? Didn't she have an HGTV show? Okay, so this is fine wallpaper, one double roll. And the thing I, I can't believe how heavy this is. The thing I loved about this, it has a silver glitter sparkle to it. I'm gonna pull back the plastic a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't get glitter all over everything and show you exactly why I picked up this wallpaper. Okay, it is so black here. It is like night. And meanwhile, it's only like, I don't know, 2.30 in the afternoon and it is pitch black here, thunder and lightning, but I'm gonna keep on going. <laughs> My lighting's gonna be off again. Oh, look at this wallpaper. Can you guys see that? Just beautiful. So I said yes to this very heavy wallpaper and what did I pay for this? I paid $5 for the roll. 
but I have sold quite a bit of wallpaper and a lot of times I do run comps. This time I did not because I feel like this is so gorgeous that the shipping will be high. So there is that, but I still think it'll sell. I know a lot of times interior decorators are really looking for something specific. So while I don't think this will fly out of my store, I'm convinced this will sell. And this will be one of the things I report back on Instagram of what sparkly wallpaper brought by Candace Olson. All right, next up, I found this walking stick. Funny story here, I was turning the corner in the thrift store and this was just leaning up against the shoe rack in the store. And I didn't want to take it because it didn't have a price tag on. And I just pictured, you know, maybe, oh, somebody's calling. Okay, so if you hear the, the claps of thunder, <laughs> it is wild here, but I'm gonna keep on going. So anyway, so I turned the corner and against the shoe rack, this cane was leaning. I don't know if it's considered a cane or a walking stick, but I thought this was really cool. And at first I thought it might've been somebody's personal cane. You know how people will use a cane and then leave it to look at an item because there was no price ticket on it. So I did walk around for quite a while asking people, is this your cane? I think I actually insulted a few people like, like they were thinking, do I look like I need a cane? But I didn't want to steal anybody's cane. So I did purchase it. I paid $2.99 for it. And I thought this was really cool. The next item that I want to show, I've picked up a few times. This one is made in Spain. It's Don Quixote. And this is leather over glass. So these bottles are actually made out of leather. And the leather is applied over the glass. And this one is actually missing its top. Very cool. And the brand name is J-E-Y-P-E. Hype Jipe? Maybe Jipe? Is that how we say that? But I said yes to this and price sticker is off already. I believe I paid $3 for it. Now because it's missing its top and these bottles are quite common, I'm going to say probably 18 to 22 will be the return on that. But very cool bottle. I guess it was meant for wine doesn't smell so <laughs> I don't think it's had any wine in it but that's what it looks like the next item up I picked up I should have run a comp on no I will still make money on it but I thought it might be worth more than it is I'm going to show it to you this little sweet vintage handbag and when my hand touched it, I could tell it was nice leather and it has the little bow on the front with a magnetic snap closure. And this is Albert Nippon. So I knew the name was um, familiar to me. The lining says Nippon on it. Really sweet. I believe it's barely used. It still has its tag in it. Let's see if it has any kind of date on it. I don't see a date, but I'm gonna guess, just to guess that this is probably from the 80s. So I said yes to it, and what did I pay for this? I actually paid up for this. I'm gonna say I paid $7 for this. Now, if I had known that there were quite a few of these on, I might have been on the fence about it, but I probably ask, I'm gonna say 30 for it, but I don't even know if it'll bring 30. So knowing what I know now, I probably would not pick this one up again. The next item used to be priced a little bit less. These are one of the items that Goodwill has caught on to that they are charging a little bit more is this beautiful horse. This looks like bronze to me. Truthfully, it's very hard for me to tell the difference between brass, bronze, pewter I know, sterling silver I know, but when the metals are like a mixed metal, copper is pretty identifiable. So I guess the two that I go back and forth about are brass and bronze. And I have used Wikipedia, I have read up on it, how one has more of a certain metal, I forget. But anyway, all of that, I paid $7, still well worth it. He is beautiful. He's unmarked as far as I can tell. I haven't found a marking on him. A lot of times horses will be marked on the inner back leg. That's been my experience, but I don't see anything on the base. No, nope, no marking. So if you know who has made this horse, I would love to hear, but definitely worth the $7, just beautiful. I have no idea what he will bring because I have not run comps, 
but I'm going to guess probably about the $40 to $44 mark. That's just a guess. Before I do a few pairs of shoes, I'm going to end the hard goods with this find. And this is something that I recently talked about. So as many of you know, I hate shopping and selling clear glass, the clear glass niche, what I call. But lately I have been going down that aisle more and more trying to find items that I feel will bring a return. Not that I'm really going to make a practice of selling clear glass because I really don't like what's involved for the shipping, but I found these glasses. So these glasses were in a box. Let me reach over and get the box for us. I'm going to show you the label on the box. It says Crystal Concepts, custom etched crystal glasses. So that's what the box looks like. As you can tell, I paid $1.99. And when you open the box, inside were four of these I guess this is a rocks glass. I don't even know if that's considered. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that with my light. On the front is the Mason symbol. That's the Mason symbol, right? With the G. And the back says James L. Ernett. I guess he's the Grand Master of Masons. So it is the Masons, 1999. So I thought right now they're very, very in need of a washing. I thought somebody would love these. See if I can block out. That's not going to block. Um, and two dollars for four glasses. Absolutely yes. I wish I could have gotten more of these. I think these will do well. You know what? One more item I wanted to do. Oh, it's famous last words. I forgot. I put it under the table. Hang on. I'll get it. So this is probably my oddest find of the day. I don't know that there's going to be a big rush to my store to buy this, but this was too cool. I couldn't let it go. Look at this large wooden wall plaque. I'll stand back with it and it says Bolivia on it. Really beautiful. I did pay seven dollars for it, but I felt this was so beautifully made that somebody's going to want this. That's my thinking. I know nothing about Bolivia. This is what the back looks like. So I said yes to this, and I really don't think I'm going to have a hard time selling this. I don't know where I'm getting that from. But number one, I don't think there's going to be a ton of these on. Number two, I don't know that there's going to be a lot of items from Bolivia. So if people are looking uh, for souvenirs or for items made in Bolivia, I think the competition, in other words, there won't be thousands and thousands of this type of item. I could be wrong about that. But absolutely, yes, for $7 to save this from the landfill all day long. So very happy with this find. All right, we're going to do a couple of pairs of shoes and then I'll end the video. This first pair of shoes is Shimano. That is the brand name and you can see that there. Shimano makes a cycling shoe or a, a spin shoe. People clip into their bikes with these type of shoes and you can buy the shoes without the clips and you can buy them with the clips. So these already have the clips. So they are a cycling shoe, and I'm not sure. I paid $7.47. I don't know what these will bring. I'm going to guess probably $35 to $38, something like that. And before I started reselling on eBay, I actually managed a fitness studio out in West Hampton, Long Island. And we had, I'm trying to remember the name of the bikes, we had 32 real rider. Uh, spin cycles. So we had the DJ and every day the studio gave spin classes. Not me. <laughs> I did do spin once in a while. I wasn't a fan of that much cardio that quickly. I'm more of like a yoga <laughs> uh, Pilates girl. Let's put it that way. But we did sell these types of shoes. That's why I know about them. We also rented them just like they do in a bowling alley. And yeah, a lot of people are into spin and uh, cycling where you clip into your pedals. So that's the first pair of shoes. All right, the next pair of shoes are really boots. So this is what this looks like. This is Donald J. Pliner. Now, Donald Pliner is a very good company in my opinion. Their quality is really good, but I'm not going to say that all Donald Pliner sells well. Some of them are just beautiful, and I think it's something you have to judge by the style of the shoe. I could be wrong about that. You could go in and put Donald Pliner into a search, 
search by solds and do highest to lowest and see what you think of the of the brand and go from there but i thought these boots were beautiful I'm not quite sure what size these are but really pretty they have like a split leather top they have a, a snap the quality is just really stunning and they are suede so i said yes to these and i paid 747 for these off the top of my head, I'm thinking about the $60 to $70 mark for those. I also picked up these men's moto, biker, military, all those words, boots. When you see a ring like this, this is called a harness ring on the boot. It's a style that a lot of men like to wear. And this is Double H, that's the company. So on the bottom, you can see I paid $13 for them. This is one of the items that have been priced up. I'm still okay with it. And it has uppercase H's, two of them together. And the brand is called Double H. Now, Double H doesn't bring real high money, but I thought the style is going to carry this boot. So I did pay $13. Normally, I would probably pay probably $9.99 to $12.99 is average. So maybe this wasn't priced up. Maybe that's what this would be. Beautiful leather. Really nice. So I said yes to those. And the last pair of boots that I will show are Ariat, A-R-I-A-T, I think is the spelling, men's cowboy western boots. And they are a 12D. I'm gonna take a tissue paper. I always stuff them with tissue paper to take photos of them. When I look at a leather cowboy boot, I'm looking for a leather inside, no fake vinyl or any of that. I'm looking for it to be branded. Let's see if I can show you the branding on this one. No, I'm not saying, Ariat, that these are going to bring this super high dollar, but these are the things that I look for. I look for a leather sole. These do not have a leather sole. I would have liked it better if they had a leather sole, but they could have this sole because it's like oil resistant. So sometimes a company that is making a beautiful boot will not put a leather sole on the bottom. They will put either oil resistant or something that's more conducive to the workforce that the man is in the field, the field that the man is in, and these are a 12D. So what did I pay for these? Let me see if the price is still on. I think I paid $10 for these. And Aria, off the top of my head, I'm thinking 55 to 60. So beautiful black cowboy boots in 12D. All right, I think I'm gonna end this video here today. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe button as always. Go out and get what's yours.